Hello, my name is Adrian Scopes from the Nationwide Building Society. I'm going to talk to you today about uh, Nationwide Printing Meadries and the Mortgage Works. And we've subtitled this presentation, You Said We Did, because it's really about changes that you told us we need to make and we got them and, and implemented them. Um, some of those changes will be from uh, a few months ago uh, and some will be fairly recent and we'll be looking at some changes that are coming up as well. Um, and uh, it'll be across the board, so it'll be underwriting changes we made, criteria changes and also processing changes and how we deal with cases as well. But as a building society, um, we can't really start um, without looking at first time buyers first of all. So um, Nationwide is a building society and its primary purpose is investing in helping people to buy their houses. And last year we had a record number of 76,000 housing. I think we'll do more this year. Um, but there's a couple of points I just wanted to make on first time buyers for you. Um, firstly is that they don't need to uh, be a first time buyer insofar as they've never had a mortgage at all. So as long as they haven't had a mortgage in the last three years, we can uh, set them as a first time buyer. Also last year, we increased the amount in which you can borrow 95% LTV. So we've now extended up to 500,000, half a million pounds at 95%. So extending our proposition to uh, a great deal more customers. So widening the offer for them. So moving on from first time buyers, um, the other big area that's been growing over the last year has been uh, remortgages and product switches. So a couple of points on here for you. Um, last year was the fifth anniversary of the Help to Buy uh, equity scheme. Um, so in the summer we introduced Help to Buy Equity Loan a remortgage that you can do. Um, that will allow you to take your clients up to 90% LTV. Um, I have to say that within that 90% you have to pay off the whole equity loan. You can't pay off partial amounts of it. You have to pay off the whole lot and you can't raise any further monies for other purposes. But you are there to help people. And I think um, the Help to Buy Equity Loan remortgage is an area that's going to grow as more and more of these come to their anniversary and people are looking to decide what to do with their equity loan. At the same time, we also extended our LTV on a, a standard remortgage. That's now up to 90% as well. Um, and that'll allow you to borrow money for home improvements and, and improving the property. Um, it's uh, a lower LTV if you're paying off debts and other uh, uh, issues. Um, so just really for home improvements. Um, and then the last point there for you is product switches. Obviously, they've been incredibly uh, um, an important change in the in the last year and a half or so, a key market area for you and product that you're doing every day. Um, what we've done last year is improve our process slightly so you can now access the system from five months from the end of the uh, loan uh, on the current product. And what I'd recommend there is that you, when you finish this uh, webinar today, is you go and have a look at your diary and re uh, re-diarize all your nationwide customers from five months out from three months so that you can get on with dealing with them as soon as possible. Um, do remember under product transfers, of course, that um, we do have loyalty products which are very uh, effective um, and uh, very efficient. And also we have um, uh, uh, prop fees which we're now paying across the board on those as well. So what else have we done in terms of processing to help you uh, with cases? So. A um, couple of key changes to, to start to reduce the amount of paper that you need to send in the amount of proofs. Um, and the first one here is to do with um, uh, state benefits. Uh, all those state benefits you can see on the screen are the ones that we will accept. Happy to take those into account. Uh, and previously we've asked for the separate award notices for those. That's now not necessary. Uh, what you need to do is provide three months bank statements showing the payments on those bank statements. We can average those payments out and these will be used to um, work out your income. Um, I might also say those bank statements um, are also useful if you've got maintenance payments. Um, we'll now accept uh, three months bank statements as proof of maintenance payments and no long, now no longer need a court order or something of that nature. Um, the last point is a, is a minor point there, but again, uh, another proof we no longer require is child benefits uh, and that we can now prove that and see that from uh, day one. Um, we've made some system changes while I'm on here talking about uh, sort of paper and that uh, over uh, January. Um, which I'll tell you about. Um, one of the key points we changed was the uh, um, additional information box that used to be on the application form. We've removed that now. Um, and so if you want to tell us something about the case, then I uh, recommend you write it out on a Word document and uh, let us have that uh, as a submitted uh, document with your other documents on the improves on the application. Um, also, where well, you've got outgoings uh, for loans and debts, and we now simplify the screen on there to make it easy to show which debts are going to continue, which ones are going to be paid off. Uh, and also on product transfers, we've now set a start date on the screen as well, so you can see when the, when the product's due to commence as well. 
those changes went in last month. What you'll see uh, next week is a further little wave of changes. And most of these revolve around warnings at certain screens. So just make sure you understand uh, what's going to happen once you keyed that screen. So for example, two or three of those. Um, where you key in uh, right at the beginning of the process uh, on a, a name, date of birth, addresses, previous address history, nationality, none of those can be changed in our system. Um, so we're now putting up a warning notice to uh, let you know that as well. Um, also, um, when you're putting in bank details, we're now also uh, uh, putting a warning on there because those bank details are the ones that we use for um, collecting the direct debit from and also for uh, uh, paying any um, checks to for cashbacks as well. Um, so it's very important those details are correct and get a warning on those as well. Um, and there's also uh, more warnings on the product transfer screen as well. So some, some product transfers you can't do through our online system. For example, if there's three or four applicants on a case, those ones if they're automated system, you need to go through uh, on a paper one. We've got more of those warnings on there as well. So, th so different warnings you'll see appearing on screens that you know and are familiar with just to help you check and make sure you've got details correct at the right time and stage. And then another big change, especially if you're in the new build uh, market, is the new build valuation will now appear in the documents uh, folder as well. So you can take that off and have that. Um, normally we don't issue valuations, you may be aware, but in new build we do need those. So you'll now see those appearing as well. So a, a good change there for you as well. Um, what else have we changed? So uh, a big change and one you've been asking for ever since we introduced this system was the file size limit to be increased. We've now put that up to nine megabytes. So hopefully, whilst we are requesting fewer proofs, you'll now be able to attach more of those proofs directly onto the file and directly onto the requirements so they get through more easily. Um, another change we made last year is pictures. Um, pictures taken with your phone, you can now attach those as documents, whether they're JPEGs, PDFs, and TIFs, um, and they can come through. Uh, and just a reminder that you actually don't need to um, certify any of those proofs. Uh, and we don't need to see any originals either. Um, so again, it, it makes life much easier for you. There's only just one exception that you'll see at the bottom, which is that um, um, you can, uh, if we do need to have identification or proof of address, those do need to be original documentations um, uh, uh, rather than like driving licenses, rather than copies of those ones as well. So, How's service going at the moment? Well, generally, you're working well with us at the moment. Um, these are the latest statistics from uh, January um, uh, where, we've, uh, where we track how well we're getting to uh, proofs attached to, to documents, uh, to, uh, to cases. And you see we get 57% of day one, and day five, 86%, and 82% of documents accepted first time. So we, we've definitely improved over the time we've had that. And average time off at the moment is currently nine days. Um, but what else can we do? Uh, to help uh, make it uh, better and improve things further. Well, we have a very simple process at, at, the, at the bottom of our pyramid. Um, essentially, your case, uh, when you submit it, sits in application vetting until such time as all proofs are received. Um, so we go off to evaluation, and it's in application vetting. And until all proofs are received, uh, it won't go through to case assessment or underwriting. Then it goes to offer. So the better we can at getting the... Uh, proofs in app vetting, then the faster the case will get through uh, to be looked at. Um, what I would say there is under app vetting is that increasingly um, we will be doing automated um, checks on things, so automated valuations, automated income verifications, so there will be fewer proofs. And um, what you'll also see is uh, as introducing um, intelligent uh, readers as well, optical readers to check proofs as well, which will speed up that process as well. Um, and what that means uh, in terms of the previous change I've just told you about, the changes we're putting in place at the moment, is the number of proofs that we're asking for has been reduced from nearly four per case down to two per case, uh, and that's really improving things. Uh, and the big change here, apart from getting the right proofs on, is two or three things that uh, we need, uh, need to make sure you're doing out there. One is do not upload documents that we don't request. Um, if you upload them, we have to look at them, and that creates usually more questions. Um, don't upload documents at DIC. We used to accept documents earlier, but now we don't, so only upload them um, when you get to application stage. And try and upload them to the correct requirement all at the same time. So sometimes people have like a page of the time of a, of a bank statement, and we need them all on there at one time. So all those things will help us to improve things going forward. Um, and so if you're looking for um, help on how to do things, I would recommend you turn to the website. So I'll talk about those a little bit more. But on there, you'll find these different guides. 
Um, and they really are sort of helpful in terms of making sure we get things right first time so that we can help you. Here's one on packaging and what uh, we want on a bank statement, pay slips, etc. Um, and then we've got uh, one on pay slips, really good analysis of what we're looking for in there. Common one here is name and address. Um, sometimes people have a two part pay slip name address on one part uh, and all the information is on the other part. Um, then we'll need both the name and address and the rest of the information, so both halves of those on a pay slip, for example, on there. And on porting, again, uh, a common one. Uh, porting is different from a normal case where people move their existing nationwide mortgage from one property to another. So just those little uh, key points in the differences there to make sure the case goes through correctly. Um, and rate switching, obviously product transfer is a key business area now, as we've discussed. And it's really, uh, this is a guide to help you. And we've made some changes recently. So it's really important that you, you have a look at that guide to make sure it guides you through. I think our system is quite intuitive, but there's no harm in having some help. And lastly, case tracking, um, always useful to, to use as your first port of call if you've got a case that's in and to make sure it's going well. Um, and before I move on to TMW, what I'd like to say there is that over the next um, uh, six months or so, you'll see us moving over to case ownership. So one person per case, so somebody who takes the case from the vetting po point all the way through to underwriting um, is a system that we're going to be implementing. That should help again to clear the uh, lines of communication and help you to get your case through quicker. I think it's a good improvement. So look out for that over the next few months as well on top of these guys helping to get cases through. So I'm going to move on to Mortgage Works for a few minutes here. And uh, what I thought I'd start with here is just making sure um, you know where we sit in the marketplace. So there's a three or four key things that we're, 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 we're probably most famous for. And the first of those is, is there is no minimum income. We do ask for income proof on more cases these days, for example, first time landlords, or for example, if uh, somebody is a lower rate taxpayer, just to check that they fit within our criteria. But we still have no minimum at all on our cases. Um, we also have no limit on the number of properties with TMW. Um, we have a lending limit, it's five million pounds per applicant. Um, but within that, you can have as many properties as you can fit in. So there's no limit there. Or on the size of the portfolio that your landlord holds as well. So if he's got two properties or he's got 200 properties, uh, he's welcome uh, to come to uh, TMW. And uh, we introduced the lower rate tax proposition uh, last year, uh, where we now got 125% um, ICR on that, which is lower than our normal 145% for those people who can fit the criteria. But we have again made some changes on TMW. So first of all, we're at 80% LTV. That was an increase that we made uh, um, in the uh, spring, uh, early summer of last year. 75% for HMOs. Um, so again, those both improvements, widening our appeal. Um, and, and a really important change in terms of people who are managing their portfolios is this one about uh, age limits. So if you've got a client um, who's an uh, uh, experienced landlord, under 65% LTV for his case, um, then there is no age limit on application. So it could be 75, 80, 85, 90, and we'd still do a case for him for 30 to 35 years. Um, now that can sound like a, a very old age and a very long time, but the key thing here is it puts you and your client in control of the portfolio. So you're managing things um, to your timescales, not to an arbitrary one set by a lender. Just a reminder there that normal applications have a maximum age of 70, uh, and you can have a 35 year term on them. Um, we changed our offers last year for remortgages. They're now six months, so that makes it easier to get those cases over the line. And of course, a big change that uh, took place last year was the introduction of, uh, of uh, company buy to let, and I'll talk a bit about that in, in a couple of slides time. But um, towards the end of last year, we, we made some changes on our, our stress rates as well. Um, first of those was around these new 10 year fixed rate products. They're available up to 65% LTV, and you can have them with an ERC at five years or 10 years, um, and um, you get a much lower stress rate on those. And you can see that it's much more easy to make your case fit the deal in those circumstances. Um, so what we think it's a real useful addition to your armory in terms of helping your clients uh, do the deals and do the business they want to do. Um, and we've also made some changes on our evidence or proof of deposit. This is always an area where we take very seriously our money laundering uh, uh, requirements, um, but we just try to simplify those and, and try and uh, reduce some of the burden on yourselves. Um, so if you've got uh, less than 10,000 as a gift now, um, then that will be, um, uh, there'll be no proof required for that. If a gift is between 10 and 50,000, we have a gift letter template, which is on our system. Over 50,000, 
we'll need to see one month's bank statement from the donor to see where the money's coming from as well. Um, so hopefully that simplified things to make sure that you're able to check those uh, out before you submit the case to us. Um, anything that was given over 12 months ago is now classed as savings and we don't have any proof in play at all. And then the last point there is we often get people having loans repaid um, and now they are, um, uh, if there's loans repayment, you can now use those as uh, deposit funds as well. So we talked about limited companies um, and I think this is a key change for us and, and a key widening of our market and, and the people we can deal with. Uh, and essentially the key, uh, what we need to remember here is that these are customers that fit within a TMW uh, customer profile but want to put their products into a limited company wrapper. Um, so uh, a couple of things first. So, so for example, you'd expect um, there to be two directors, uh, no more than two, and those two directors have to own 100% of the shareholding of the business. And we won't accept limited IP partnerships or partnerships in general. Um, so you've got 125% ICR coverage there, 170% for HMOs, the products are available up to 80% LTV, and there's no floating charge requirement. Um, we need the special purpose vehicle, and you can only use one special purpose vehicle for TMW as well. And we do accept portfolios under our limited company range as well. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about portfolios here. It's quite a busy screen again. Um, we consider somebody to be a portfolio landlord if they own four or more distinct properties with a mortgage on it. Seven if it's a remortgage. So if it's a portfolio, we're going to need three months bank statements so we can see the rental payments. And we're also going to need the property schedule. And you can see there that we'll stress that property schedule depending on the size of it at different rates um, to make sure that it fits our criteria. So again, make sure it does that. Um, a really important thing that's happening here is in the next few weeks, we're going to trial a new application form for the limited companies. Um, and hopefully um, you'll see that uh, coming out very soon. Um, that will help um, and, uh, uh, and then improve uh, service again. Um, just moving on now to help um, what's available to you on the website. We have guides uh, on there similar to Nationwide to help you put your cases through. Do use those to help you how to do things. But we also have on there information about the marketplace. Um, we do our own research with BDRC. and We do our, our own graphics and that to, to show how the market's looking. So good to inform yourselves and your clients. But also uh, at the bottom there is a, is a tax relief uh, change calculator. So if you've got a client in front of you, not sure what their tax relief situation is going to be, this is a really useful tool with very limited information. You can quickly work out how the tax position is going to change with the uh, income tax changes, which we're right in the middle of uh, happening at the moment. Um, so that's all, all there and on our system at the moment. Um, what I would say on TMW, what you'll see um, soon is a, a new online system, a new digital system that we're bringing in, hopefully in the summer. Um, and that will be linked to our property hub in due course as well. And that will allow some automated valuation to take place on bike left as well as we do on residential on nationwide as well. So some very exciting developments due this year, which again should enhance and help your journey. So where else can you go to get help apart from the online stuff? Well, broker chat is the obvious one for us now. Um, we've just uh, in the last few days enhanced the process. There's a new system gone in play. Um, so you can uh, find out on broker chat about lending criteria, product information, population fees and, and registrations. You can also now get some tech help on there as well um, and also uh, system support um, so you can get access to things uh, uh, more easily and that's the, the quickest and easiest way to, to get to those uh, um, uh, help and support for, with, with Nationwide or TMW. Um, got a phone number there for dedicated broker support, they're always good and on the end of the phones uh, and we have a field team of 41 BDMs, uh, 10 telephone BDMs as well in support of those who can look after you as well. Um, if you've got a new build case or you're a specialist in new build, there's a new build support team. They really do know how to get these cases through. They understand the slightly different requirements of the new build market uh, and uh, are very good at helping you in that area as well for that specialism. And if you've got cases where you need to check how they're going, do call the pipeline business uh, number to help you through on that. So just one last uh, uh, thing that has changed uh, in the last few weeks, which is our websites for both Nationwide and The Mortgage Works. They've been given a more modern uh, 21st century look. Um, they're usable on, on any device now, so you should find them reshaping nicely to uh, either your tablet or your phone, but uh, on the laptop, of course, as well. You can now print pages, and it's been made easier to find things on there so you can find your searches uh, and find out information and the tools that you need much more quickly as well. So hopefully you'll, uh, you'll like those, and that'll help your journeys as well. So 
So it just leaves me uh, at the very end of my presentation now just to say thank you very much for listening today. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, it's been a very exciting 12 months for Nationwide and the Mortgage Works. There's a lot more change in the pipeline than coming and we're looking to work with you throughout 2019 and hopefully I'll meet you out in the field sometime soon. Thanks very much for your time.